Joining us now is Doug Wilder, former governor of the Commonwealth of Virginia, a Democrat. And uh, Governor Wilder, thanks for joining us here this morning. I know you must be proud to have witnessed the campaign that we just saw, one that was in, was a, a, a campaign of ideas in which the real issues uh, of all Virginians were discussed in a thoughtful and caring way and, uh, and where everybody conducted themselves in the highest order. I know you must be proud of what you've just witnessed. If, if I could stop laughing, I could answer <laughs> your question. <laughs> Brian and Larry, how you guys doing? We're good. I, uh, I tell you what, this is what I predicted, that the election would take place. It would be closer than people thought, that the vote in Northern Virginia would be that vote, which would turn it out. And I also said that the vote for the, at the uh, attorney general's race was going to be very, very close. Yeah, uh, you guys understand, and I don't have to tell you this. Terry McAuliffe almost had a backfire there by having Obama to come in. That thing is so unpopular in Virginia, and, and you saw it witnessed. If you look at the map and see the areas that he did not carry, it it was frightening. Another thing it tells you, and you've heard me say it on so many occasions, the only poll that really counts is the one that's taken on election day. All of these other double-digit polls and high single yep. numbers, they didn't work. Well, you know, as a Democrat, uh, I, I I know that you know you did you did offer your support to Terry McAuliffe, yeah, which he accepted. Oh, and, but of course, and of course he would. <laughs> but here's the thing: I mean, if I were a Democrat this morning, and I'm looking at how Ken Cuccinelli came back from a double-digit deficit, riding the issue of Obamacare, and almost. One. I mean, he came real close. He did. Nobody thought he was going to be that close. Everybody thought it was going to be a blowout. And yet, by taking that issue in the last days of his campaign and riding it hard, he almost won this thing. If I'm a Democrat and I've got Obamacare and I own it now, because I mean, Democrats definitely own it, I would be a little worried about what this would portend for I'd the be midterm very elections. Concerned. And t Ken Cuccinelli has a new name this morning. His, his name is Lazarus. He has come from the dead. To, to show that, my goodness, I was spent by $15 million <laughs> having everybody campaign against him. And as I said earlier, the biggest mistake made in the McAuliffe campaign was the later reduction directly of Obama in the campaign. It almost sank him. And you're absolutely right. The Democrats need to understand whether it's good, bad, or indifferent the public doesn't understand it to the extent that they like it. It needs to have work, serious work, and surgery as quickly as possible. Now, hold on. I just want to. Re I want you to reiterate this so everybody heard you. Governor Doug Wilder, elder statesman of the Democratic Party in the Commonwealth of Virginia, says the biggest mistake Terry McAuliffe made was bringing Obama to campaign with him side by side. It didn't help him. And if that were the case, then where do you see those results? Yeah. Clearly, all over the state, if you look at the red areas of the state, and the, the, well, if you look at the few blue areas of the state in returns, you could see that it was not a popular thing. And the unfortunate thing, as, as we're speaking about it, is it's not a question of whether you want good health care. The question is whether this particular unfolding has wrought to the benefit or to the great despair of a great number of Virginians or Americans, and I think that's the case. That has to be fixed. Yeah. Uh, Doug, Doug, governor Doug Wilder is yeah. our guest, and I would love for you to uh, reflect on your days as governor. You understand the power of that office, but also the limitations of that office. What is Terry McAuliffe's future looking like for the next four years, considering he could barely get 48 percent of the vote? It, it, does he go in as a somewhat weakened governor-elect, considering a majority of people voted against him? And that's a point that most people haven't focused on yet, what you just said. For barely 48% of the vote. That's the first time in years that you've had less than a majority of the people of Virginia voting for its governor. Terry McCullough is a smart man. He understands that he needs to go and work with people. I was good, glad to see how he spoke a bit last night about reaching across the aisle. The way you introduced the program this morning when you spoke of this great <laughs> campaign. The high-minded issues, yes. Uh, uh, <laughs> All the high-minded issues yeah, that were discussed. I, that never occurred. To the contrary, it has to take place now. And so I would think that Terry McCauley would be smart to make certain that he has good people in his administration, 
doesn't go in with the broom to sweep everybody out who was there. The other thing Cuccinelli was running on, Virginia's governor and government was in better shape than most states across the country. But he couldn't capitalize on it because of other things that had happened. And yet Bob McDonald had, had been a good governor. His favorabilities were in the 60s prior to the other things taking place. And so I, I, I don't disagree with you. Terry McCauley is going to have a, a tough job. He can do it, I think, if he works with the people who want to pre- bring Virginia forward, get past these ideological finger pointings, and work for the betterment of all Virginians. But very, very quick, he is limited by the fact that Republicans still control the legislature, right? That's right, and he's got to reach across the aisle. The other thing this point is out, and, and you guys know it as well as I do, one of the big things that Terry wanted to do was the expansion of Medicaid. Mm-hmm. That might not take place, so if you're going to be looking for your money to come from that direction, with the very issue you just raised as it relates to Republicans still being in control of the House and in the numbers of Democrats in the Senate now saying, hey, wait a minute, we'll be up for re-election. we got to look at this thing twice. So that money might not be as readily available as might have been thought in the first instance. Doug Wilder, it is always a pleasure. Thank you for My joining pleasure, us this guys. morning. All right. Talk to you soon. By Bye-bye. the way, Jim Gilmore was on half an hour ago. He sends you his love. He's a good man. All right. <laughs> there you go.